next we're going to take a look at the opiate system. And again, this is uh, one of the neuro neurobiological systems that is laid down developmentally and is affected by whether a uh, you know, person or an animal, for instance, gets adequate you know, tactile stimulation. <clears throat> People that develop borderline personality disorder have a very peculiar uh, opiate system in the brain. And what we see here is something that all of you know about clinically, and that is that in borderline patients, it's not unusual to engage in self-mutilation. As the slide shows, about 70% of people that have borderline personality will do this, and it's done as a it's it's done as a, a means of uh, reducing tension. Okay, let's take a look at this next slide for just a moment. Motives for self-injury. Uh, sometimes it, this is uh, social, so, socially accepted, and this would be in the form of, of people uh, uh, you know, piercing and tattoos, and sometimes even just cutting yourself. But but it's in the public arena. You see this a lot in teenagers, and, and it's not psychopathology in the general sense of the word, but it has to do with fitting in with the group and that sort of thing. Uh, sometimes people will do make. Uh, superficial or uh, very, very non-lethal suicide gestures in, in hoping to have some kind of an impact on other another person, either to maybe uh, as a cry for help to get somebody to be more involved with them or care for them more, or it could be a way of punishing someone, like a woman finds out her husband has an affair and she cuts her wrist superficially and says, see what you've done to me. So the, the motive there then is to get something interpersonally. Uh, Sometimes people, and mostly this is occurs with people who have uh, chronic severe PTSD uh, and, and can have chronic PTSD along with borderline personality disorder, sometimes self-mutilation serves the purpose of kind of waking somebody up. People that are in these states of prolonged dissociation, they're like zombies, they're numbed out, they're walking through life, and, they, and then people will tell you that, you know, I feel like I'm on drugs, but I'm not on drugs, but I feel glazed over and I can't think clearly. Sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm dead even, you know. And so people sometimes will cut themselves or burn themselves, and the pain, in a sense, kind of gives them a, a, at least a momentary sense of aliveness. It kind of transiently breaks through the dissociation. Sometimes people self-mutilate because it, it's a manifestation of them punishing themselves. They hate themselves, and so they do this. But by and large, the most common motive for self-injury then is tension reduction. And what happens here is, is the, the person, in all, not exclusively, but almost so, people with borderline personality disorder, or people that do this, uh, they, they experience this really engulfing state of uh, it could be rage, could be fear, could be terrible loneliness, uh, just an engulfing emotional state. And they have discovered that um, somehow if they cut themselves or burn themselves, there are two things that happen. One is uh, an immediate uh, re reduction in the affect state that they were uh, experiencing. Okay, so it, it works very quickly. And the other is, interestingly, is the, when they burn themselves, they actually don't feel much pain at all or cut themselves. And, and the, there's strong evidence to suggest what's going on here is having been born with a very uh, peculiar opiate system, uh, very low-level pain, like burning yourself. Now, I, you know, it's not horrible pain, but it hurts. That's enough, though, to evoke a, ter a tremendous endorphin response. And the person then just glazes over. Actually, it's a kind of a, a, a biochemically induced dissociation. And uh, there was a study that was done in Boston, and they had a 24-hour crisis clinic. And uh, they en enrolled uh, people in the study, and these were people that had a history of frequent self-mutilation. And the crisis clinic was open 24 hours a day. And so what they did is they, uh, the people that volunteered for the study, they said, now, for gosh sakes, we don't want you to burn yourself or cut yourself or whatever, but if you do, please try to get down here within 20 minutes. Now, the reason for this is that if you, if you get a shot of morphine, it typically will last about an hour until it is metabolized and out of your system. Likewise, when people do this uh, self-inflicted injury and then have this uh, opiate response, that tends to last about an hour also, and then it wears off. When it wears off, they, they may or may not re-experience the, the severe uh, depression or anger, what have you, but they'll start feeling the burn. 
Okay, so the, the the analgesic part of the of this is is you know is it, it, just it's lost after about an hour. Okay, so anyway, what they found uh, in these people that came, uh, you know, middle of the night, whenever, you know, they would come and they had been uh, having some horrible emotional thing happening to them, and they self mutilated. And when they came in, they described them as being uh, very uh, dissociated. They looked glazed over. They were affectively bland. They weren't talking about anything that's highly emotional. And, and so what they did then is they did random assignment and they either gave them an injection of saline, which would be the placebo, or they would get, give them an injection of uh, a drug that blocks opiate receptors. And this could be naltrexone or naloxone. And, naloxone. and these are drugs that are used to treat heroin overdoses. And what happens is the, uh, the endorphin it is, is binding to opiate receptors, and that's what's settling people down emotionally. But the, these uh, opiate antagonists come in, and they knock the, the endorphin off of the receptor. Okay, and, and, and therefore, when that happens, then you'll get a, a breakthrough then of, of the emotional uh, state or at least the physical state uh, caused by the burn. And what they found, of course, uh, you know where I'm going with this, is the placebo group basically didn't do very much of anything. They didn't tell them what to expect. But in the group that actually got the, the, the drug, then they would re-experience, uh, many of them re-experience this, this horrible uh, anxiety or whatever the emotion was uh, and start feeling the burn. Okay, so I think really providing fairly good uh, evidence to suggest that this is what's going on on a biological basis, okay? So, uh, let's go back to the monkeys. Remember I said what they do? They self-mutilate. They bang their head against the cage. They pull their hair out. And in the most severe cases, they'll literally bite their fingers off. And the assumption here is they are probably experiencing exactly what is happening with people that have borderline personality disorder. And, then, and just as a, an, an aside, let me really emphasize that the, the motive here, uh, if it results in tension reduction, has nothing to do with wanting to die it doesn't have anything to do with self-hatred. It's actually, tr they're trying to feel better. And, and obviously it's, it's a, a very risky kind of maneuver because you can accidentally cut an artery uh, or all kinds of other bad things can happen, but uh, it, they do it because it works. And so that's their motive. Now the vast majority of people self-mutilate in that fashion never tell anybody. They have a lot of shame about this. Uh, let's go back to this. Uh, picture here. This person has multiple lacerations on their wrist. I saw this woman once and she was a school teacher, third grade teacher, and she had won awards uh, for teaching excellence, but she had borderline personality disorder. And uh, she came into therapy with me and it was about six months into therapy that she said, John, I, gotta sh I need to show you something. And she rolled up her sleeve and her whole arm all the way up to her armpit and her shoulder, thousands of lacerations. And I, I asked her a couple of things. When I, I said, uh, "Tell me a little bit about about you know why you've done this," and and uh, a lot of therapists actually will say, uh, I, "I I'm curious. Do you feel an immediate sense of relief from some kind of intense emotion?" And a lot of times the person is going to go, "Yeah, God, how did you know?" Because the reason they don't tell anybody is if they tell people, they're going to say, are you crazy? You know, or are you a masochist? And they're neither, okay? Masochism is about wanting to hurt. Here, it's exactly the opposite. It's wanting to stop hurting, okay? So when you can talk to them and, and, and uh, discover the motive, exactly what happens in the immediate aftermath of cutting yourself, then, uh, and be able to share that with the patient, then a lot of times, they, they, maybe for the first time ever, they, they feel a sense of being understood. Okay, so anyway, having said, that's kind of a digression there, but I think it has some significant human clinical.